<laughs> hey everyone, uh, apparently we've got the camera to the side. Uh, hopefully that was a fun and crazy intro. Welcome to the channel and welcome back. If you're a returning subscriber, you beautiful, magnificent beast, this is Ginger Prime. And today uh, we have an interesting topic it is surrounding the concept of is Final Fantasy XIV just experiencing a bubble, a massive amount of growth that eventually just kind of, you know, pops and everything either returns to normal or quote unquote crashes. And I'm here to kind of say kind of, but at the end of the day, that even if there is a essentially kind of a settling down of the excitement around Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy XIV has risen and will continue to rise because it plays the fundamentals uh, correctly. Now, I've got a couple thoughts that I want to share, especially that maybe people haven't thought of. But as always, I love to know your thoughts on any of these discussion topics that I share here with you guys today. But before I dive in, I'm going to kind of cut over here to Twitch. Uh, not Twitch. <laughs> Twitter. Twitch, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> Uh, in this regards, uh, Roy, uh, kind of basically responding to my historic rise, saying, I can't really agree. It's a growth when a bunch of people watching one person, though. If he stops streaming it, the historic moment is that we hit 200k viewers on Final Fantasy XIV's category and never again without Asmund. Uh, it barely touches 100k as is, and it doesn't do much for Final Fantasy XIV. And with all respect to Roy, like I'm not sitting here throwing shade, uh, guys, if you always see, you know, people that I reference, in a tweet, just note that you should always send them love. Uh, it is not about essentially, uh, you know, I guess shaming. I just disagree with Roy, but I want to kind of set up this video in terms of this discussion specifically. The reason why it's important, and yes, right now those numbers are obviously inflated because Asmund, but other big time streamers are playing the game. And the first reason, the first real thing that is uh, has changed over the course of the last couple of years is especially as it relates to more viewers are hungry for Final Fantasy 14 content. Uh, there is an economy around content creation. If you've been on with me on live stream, you know I've used that term, the content creator, the creator community, uh, the economy in this case, uh, numerous times. And that is essentially where even somebody on a video today saying like, it's funny how all these people become Asmund fans. Uh, yeah, there is essentially people see what people are talking about and the content creators make that. But it's all in response to the community wanting the content. That's how all of this works. If somebody doesn't really ask for a guide, nobody would have ever seen a controller guide for any of the melees if you guys did not ask for them. That's essentially this relationship or this conversation comes into play. People ask for content and someone who wants to make that content ends up filling that gap. So there is a huge viewership obviously around the excitement of Asmund. But what other people aren't seeing is that more and more content creators are making up that number. Asmund didn't just carry that number completely. There are there are streamers right now streaming Final Fantasy 14 to 1,000, to 2,000, to 5,000, to 8,000 viewers. This has not happened in the past outside of a big event. Since an ultimate raid, and imagine if we had an ultimate raid right now, that'd be freaking huge. All right, so settle down, Brian. Um, beyond that, I'm just looking over my bullet point list. I want to talk about Final Fantasy XIV's ace in the sleeve. One of the things that XIV does that nobody else does in the MMORPG space, and if you guys are new here, this might come as a shocker, but for, for returning subs, PlayStation, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, that is something that other MMOs do not do do, or at least for the most part. There might be one out there that I'm thinking of. I know Fantasy Star Online 2 exists, but right now that's only on Xbox. Speaking of Xbox, Final Fantasy XIV is not on that platform. It's not on GeForce Now. It's not on Stadia. And you might be lol Stadia, but regardless, like these are platforms where people play video games. Xbox could easily add a couple hundred thousand new players to this game, introduce it to a couple hundred thousand who don't have a PC to play this game on. GeForce Now can introduce this game to thousands of people who have the internet to be able to stream these games. Now, Final Fantasy XIV is also an online game. So the idea of like, why would you, you know, stream a game really kind of goes out the window if you got the bandwidth with an MMORPG where it's always online. That is a part of its deal. It's a part of its existence is it's always connected to the internet. And that's a huge aspect of, for this game. And the fact is, is that Final Fantasy XIV isn't yet not everywhere. That will change. That will change with enough time. We don't know, obviously, when. It could easily be a couple years from now. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of factors that go into those business decisions and when and to what to roll out to. But for 
PS4 and PS5 players, uh, being able to team up with your friends and your family uh, is so much easier than it would be with WoW and Guild Wars and all these other MMORPGs, especially because Final Fantasy XIV from the ground up is built for controller support. And that is a huge factor. Obviously, I have that's how people have discovered my channels. Like that's how people know Ginger Prime worked the game is technically through the controller guides. Not always. We've got, people have come in from Pokemon videos and things like that. But if nothing else, people say, "I oh, I like Brian his controller guides. That's that's what I like to watch." That's awesome, and thank you guys also for watching uh, the videos. But it's an important factor that. Uh, is a key aspect it's accessible it is playable you can play it on controller you can play it on mouse and keyboard you might be thinking why would anybody want to play an mmo on a controller i would recommend checking out the controller guides it's absolutely feasible and possible to do so so it's not just a bubble that's built off of one individual i think essentially what we're seeing here is is a continued rise due to the fund uh the foundational foundationals um, of Final Fantasy, Yoshi P, and the whole team behind this game. Not only that, though, we, but we have an expansion coming out in November. So what you're seeing here is that you see a, a, like a community that's hungry for content. You see people developing that content and people watching and enjoying and sharing that content that allows people to get over their bias or their preconceived notions or their fear about this game for whatever reason. You know, I'm not a WoW refugee. Wow, it's just not my flavor of tea. I've tried it. It just wasn't for me, and that's okay. However, what we're seeing is a lot of WoW creators being able to step into the space and being welcomed with open arms, which is a huge boost. That means more content, more eyes on this game, more people checking out this game, and overall raising the tide for everyone. Whether Asmin or any one particular person sticks with the game is actually irrelevant. What you're seeing here, though, is that with each new wave of WoW refugees, you're seeing this shift within gaming and MMOs in general beyond one person mmos isn't typically like the largest draw over on twitch but it is this weekend and overall i think that's going to help set people up to get out of their bubble to get out of their their lane in a way you know like where people feel trapped that they can only talk about one game but yet they play final fantasy 14 a lot of people are like that like oh yeah like people know me for x but i really you know play a lot of 14 um i don't get a lot of viewers that way but by people showing up for the streams it communicates that there's a willing and hungry market, and that comes down to the economy itself. Now, I talked about con uh, uh, console support. I talked about controller support. I talked about the expansion in November. I talked about, um, you know, like obviously the game's going to have its up and ups and downs. Like even like still, like it's going to go and ride like this. But that minimum bar has been raised. Kind of like the the, ce the floor has been raised, and the ceiling looks higher than it ever has before. And that's a really interesting thing. Where typically we would say, well, maybe the theoretical max for a Final Fantasy XIV stream would be 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people. But now that max has been raised, and that's an exciting thing to see. Overall, talked about the ace of the sleeve. I talked about built for the ground up for accessibility, and I talked about viewers. That's like, like that's my bullet point list for the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, hopefully this has been a fun video for you guys to watch. I obviously am very excited to see the growth within the 14 community. I'm obviously very excited to see that more people are enjoying this game than ever before. And I just want to continue to encourage people to try it out. You can always check out the, uh, like the free trial link that I put in the videos for Final Fantasy. I don't get a dime for it. Literally, it's just for me to kind of give you guys... Hey, go play this game if you haven't already. Start with a free trial. It's absolutely free. You can play the meme, the critically acclaimed, all the way through the critically acclaimed Heaven's Word, which by far is one of my favorite expansions, if not my favorite story within Final Fantasy. Stormblood, uh, you know, kind of dipped down a little bit. Shadowbringers definitely brought it back uh, to, to its high. And right now, I think in my mind, I'm juggling between Heaven's Word and Shadowbringers. If for some reason this video gets a thousand likes, which would be kind of crazy because this is more kind of a coffee chat, a little uh, unscripted, uh, just opinion piece. If any of these videos get a thousand likes, which I think would be a record, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do like a full restory uh, I'll play through on a new character for you guys on stream at some point before N Walker. So um, I'm going to stop saying that like sometime in August because that time frame becomes a little bit iffy. But if nothing else, guys, thank you so much for the likes, the shares, the comments, the clips, and more. For Ginger Prime, my name is Brian. Thanks to all the members on this channel for supporting these videos if you guys aren't aware um i'm taking the the, the help from the members uh to make the guides uh completely mid-roll free so that way you can enjoy them without being interrupted with an ad which is great we all like that um anyway so thanks to the members who uh make that possible thanks everybody hopefully you're having a fantastic day hope to see you in my next video but until then take care